Just before we get started on day three, I want to take you back to meet Fiona and Alison, who stayed behind while we all left to look after our patient who we'd operated on. And they kept, stayed in the makeshift intensive care and worked with the night staff to see him safely through the night. So how's it gone? It's uh, half past ten at night. Uh, you're here, everyone else is at home in, in bed. Yeah. <laughs> how's it gone? First it's gone one. really well. Um, we came in this morning, we kind of had no ITU, so we had quite a lot of stuff to set up. But the local team have been brilliant, the nurses have been brilliant. We've got all our equipment set up. The patient came back about four o'clock and we managed to get him extubated, get the tube out and awake by seven o'clock. And he's stable and he's good, so we're very happy. We're very tired, but we're very happy. Yeah. And have you got a partner in crime there somewhere? I have indeed, I have my partner <laughs> Alice in here. <laughs> <laughs> so which one of you does the most work? Uh, me, I've just, because I'm the most tired. So, yeah, she's just jumped up there. Anyway. But no, it's been an eventful day, a long day, but uh, worthwhile. worthwhile, yeah. Very humbling, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, fantastic. Uh, so at half past ten, and what are you looking forward to doing now? Going <laughs> to bed, to bed yes. sharing a bed, yeah. you know, tired. <laughs> but then when you look there, yeah, look, that's it's what it's all, all about. <laughs> it just me. Yeah. yeah nice. Great. Well done. We'll let you go to bed. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's, uh, it's day three, it's half past six, and we're about to start pacing. <laughs> Who's going to be setting it up for you? Uh, it looks like me on my own, I've, uh, I've got you out to give me a hand. Um, but I'm told there's a scrub nurse and a radiographer about to appear at seven. <laughs> Great. So we'll see how we get on. Right, best of luck. Cheers, John. <laughs> are you, you right-handed? I am. Yeah. So we'd have the trolley here, okay. all laid out with the kit. Yeah. As you can see, so you're pretty much stood in that position. Okay. So if you're right-handed, it's just easier for you to get everything. Um, and when you get in access, everything is right-handed. It's so when you start doing it different every time, you get problems. I had a problem with my heart. And, uh, I got into medical offices. Our pulse is so low, I can't sustain, and I have got BP. I can't sustain the BP. Okay. So I need a pacemaker to supplement it. I think it can help me to uh, live longer, a little. Put a dual chamber pacemaker in. Uh, it promises complete heart block. Yeah. I've now got a heart rate of 60, Fantastic. as opposed to 25, which is what we started with. Um, we've been soldiering on, waiting for us to, waiting for us to come. <laughs> so he's our first, first patient paced, another five or six to go. So we've got a second patient who's here, who um, is a little bit younger. The same story, complete heart block, which has been present, we know, since August of last year from an ECG. She's having recurrent blackouts, yeah. and she's got quite an ugly looking escape rhythm. So um, for that patient, I think if we don't put a pacemaker in, we um, like expectancy significantly limited because of it. So this is the second case of something you'd be doing as an emergency. In so England. in England, it would be somebody who, if they came in on a weekend, would get a pacemaker on a weekend. Um, really, she's not come to any significant harm in the last few months, but. It is very slow and I'm not surprised that there are blackouts because of it. So, yeah. <laughs> Different world. Different world. How are you feeling? You're feeling okay? <laughs> are you looking forward to being better? <laughs> well, unfortunately, Elizabeth um, was a lady who had caused a lot of discussion and concern about her operation. She was a relatively high risk lady who required two valves to be repaired or replaced. 
um, and we agreed on a plan for the day, hoping she'd be the first of possibly two patients. Uh, her previous blood results, uh, uh, we'd been told, were normal um, when we came. Um, but having checked, having checked more blood results today, we found she has a very low platelet count. We're not sure why. Um, but this does cause concern, it increases her risk of bleeding post-operatively. Back in the UK we can give platelets, um, we can give platelet transfusions, we can also use uh, what's called cell salvage to recycle patient blood that's shed and restore it to them. Um, but here we don't have either of those options, so operating on the lady for two valves with a low platelet count is, is really not wise. So unfortunately we had to at least postpone the operation while we can check the count to see if it's a lab error, which it, which it may be, um, or, or to reconsider the treatment plan at all. The normal platelet count is 150, today is 60. It's normally, it starts out, platelet count 200, 250, maybe now about 100, 150. That's okay. Now we need 60. It's an operation, maybe we're not going to cry. It's not just a good bleeding. Good bleeding, so you need platelets for heart, it went out. Oh, 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 oh. This gentleman has got mild valve regurgitation. Is that all right for you? Mild yeah. valve yeah. regurgitation, so the plan is to replace his valve. He's, he's very, very small, um, he's actually 48 kilograms, which is, which is at the very low edge of what we're used to seeing at home. Um, and, and people who are underweight do have less physical reserve for coping with the difficulties of recovery from surgery. So there is, that is a concern. I think he had the, he had the twinkling eye, you know, um, eyeball positive approach, so that's good. Oh, 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 that's not too good. That's not too good. I would take that out actually. I would take that out, yeah. I would take that out. I'd be concerned with that. You don't have to use gowns anymore if you like, that'll save you a few, won't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. You need a big glove, mm -hmm. big size 8. So is that exactly how you do it in England then, Caroline, yeah, is it? This is it, this is it. <laughs> I think we'll this is cool. There. Winging it, isn't yeah, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, good fun. Once you've made that call, you might want to make a call bigger. So you're just wrong. Is that okay? This is, this is how the mission system works. So we go to places and we meet new people and we learn from them. So here we have a medical student yes. whose name is. Yeah, Priscilla, um, yeah, from Germany. And um, yeah, I'm doing my internship for public yeah, in Kompanachi Hospital. <laughs> so hi, I'm um, uh, Isaac. I'm the character assistant surgeon in Kumasi here, at the Kumachichi Hospital. Uh, I'm the, currently I'm the only character surgeon in town now, trying to establish a unit of character assistant vascular surgery in Kumasi. Apparently we have only one cardiac center in Ghana, which is in the capital city, Accra, where I was trained for five years and I went outside for further training and I returned to this hospital in 2015. And we are very excited, very happy for our core to come to, you know, have come to Ghana. He's a Ghanaian and apparently lucky for us, he's from this part of Ghana. He's a Kumasi boy. So we are excited about his coming to Kumasi. So for a year now I've been planning, it's taken a year, communication communications, Equipment wise, human resource wise, I mean, a fantastic one year, and we know that we have a great future with, with uh, Enoch as far as Kumasi Career Center is concerned. And, uh, and, and you see all these patients that could have heart surgery, if only you had a program. I mean, how many patients are out there? If you had limitless ability to do heart surgery, how many patients are out there that need urgent heart surgery? You know, in Kumasi Hospital, currently we have almost six cardiologists, adult cardiologists, and they're running two day a week cardiac clinic. And that's one of the busiest clinics we have in Kumasi. There are so many valvular cases, heart surgeries, with an operation. A lot of patients are there, and you saw a patient that we screened them. Most of them are very, very bad hearts, young people, second decade, 20s and 30s. We have more than 200 patients who might need surgery in adults. And for children, more than 700 patients we need to have surgery. So who are you with, Kim? 
This is David. Do you pronounce your surname Carrier? Carrier. Carrier. David Carrier. Yeah. And he's Australian. Australian. Yeah. 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 Yeah